like to welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is George Connor. I'm the Southeast Region Engineer for Alabama DOT. On behalf of the Department, State of Alabama, Governor Bentley, and Director John Cooper, we're bringing this press conference to discuss the next closure and bridge slide portion of our project that's out on Ross Clark Circle. Um, this project is a a $6.99 million project. We are in the final stretches of that, and we've had one successful bridge slide, and we're about to start the other. I've got some information I'd like to share, but before I do, I'd like to ask Mayor Schmitz if he'd come up and say a word. Okay, well, just stay up here, just one word. Thank you. Uh, you did what you said to the contractors. Thank you. Um, we were going to do it within seven days, and, and you did. Congratulations with that, and Thank you for letting everyone know what's going on and, and continue for the, the next one. Uh, as you know and you, you've heard before, this is the first time this has happened in our state. This is new stuff and we think it's exciting and uh, we're grateful to you. And I appreciate Chairman Culver, City Manager, and all of you getting the story out and letting folks know. I think it worked pretty well. Um, a lot of people took the detour, which was a good thing. So. Just thank you guys. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, the segue on what the mayor was saying, one of the things that we wanted to talk about specifically was this idea of public outreach. Um, we made a large effort with your help in reaching out to the public and uh, did at a level I think was very high and to an extent was very effective. At the same time, there were a, a large number of people who came to the construction site saying, telling us, because we had direct contact with almost every one of them, that they had not heard anything about getting out there. Now, it wasn't on any lack of our trying or your support and your trying. But what we've tried, what we're going to do is double up on some of that, but also would like to make a plea for your help, right? If I didn't have to pave roads and build bridges with our budget, I'd spend a whole lot more money buying advertising and paper and radio and TV. But within the things that we have available to us, I, I, we are planning to do more PSAs, radio spots. We invite you on TV stations to run tickers in places that are appropriate. We've got timeline information that will be available from our public information specialist, Brantley Kirk. But I also uh, solicit your input, your suggestions, your ideas about how to get that done. You're in the communications business. I'm in the engineering business. And so I need the help of experts, and that's who you are. So if you would help us with that, if you have a suggestion, we absolutely solicit your input and would love to have that. Um, we know we're not going to reach every single person, but I believe, based on the numbers we saw at the last slide, we could do a better job of reaching more people than we did. We did a really good job. We're very pleased with the last couple of weeks, but we're trying to reach a higher mark and do a, do a better job with that. Some of the things that I want to review just briefly from uh, about the project in general is the mayor said this is a first time we're doing this in the state of Alabama where we're sliding a bridge into place. We did that last week and it was a great success. By contract, had seven days to get it done and they got that done early. One thing I want to stress is just like commercials where they talk about selling you uh, stock tips. You know, past performance is not a guarantee of future success. Because he did that a certain way the first time doesn't mean that the second time will be the same length of time. We need to plan on, and everybody that's listening to this message needs to plan on the full closure time of seven days. Our schedule is going to be the same as what we had last week. We, we had a single lane closure that's going to start this Wednesday. They're going to close the outside lane and begin excavation. So the outside, northbound, sorry, inside, I said outside, erase all that, and every time I said outside, say inside. <clears throat> but on the inside circle for the northbound traffic, they're going to close the lane that's on the, to the driver's right, and they'll start excavating. And when they do, it'll be a single lane from Wednesday until Friday at 6 p.m. Friday at 6 p.m., they're going to close the roadway completely from Bombin Drive, from Fortner to Bombin. 
uh, businesses that are on that side of the circle, on the inside, will be able to be accessed. Uh, we've, I've, we've verified that there will be ways to do that. When barricades are in place, uh, people are staffing those barricades 24 hours and they're able to do it. Now, some of that access may be by going around the detour. We had a number of people who would come up to the barricade and say, I want to get through to go to that business, and they pointed to the business on the other side of that great big deep hole in the roadway. We physically couldn't let them go because they'd run off in the hole. But you can get there if you'll go around the detour. So this information about the detour, the more it's disseminated, will make it easier for people to get where they want to be and uh, get to the places they need to be. This graphic is available on our website. It's attached to the press release that we've handed out, and it's also going to be published in Tuesday's paper, if I understand correct. Either Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, either Tuesday or Wednesday, this graphic will be published, and it has more information about where you'll be able to get to, etc. And I, I'll welcome any questions anybody has after the press conference, and I'll go over those, and our staff here will help go over that to your satisfaction. Um, we want to make sure everybody knows that the most timely place and the most uh, accurate place to get updates on the progress of the project is on our Facebook page, okay, Dothan Bridge, all one word, no spaces, and on our Twitter feed, which is at Dothan Bridge. We have a website, DothanBridge.com, but the updates are extracted from Facebook, and you see a part of those. If you want to know the hour by hours or the most timely updates, Facebook page and Twitter. If you want to watch it on video uh, live, that's where you go to DothanBridge.com. And we also have pu published a link to the time-lapse video of the first bridge slide. I uh, want to make sure everybody understands and, re and is aware of, remembers that we have a 24-hour hotline, 334-792-9330. Again, 334-792-9330 is a 24-hour hotline where if there is an issue with the project, you can call that number and somebody will take that information and make sure it gets to the right person. And, as always, you can post those same questions or comments or uh, inquiries on Facebook, and those are monitored also and are responded to quickly. As an effort to make sure we can get a better dissemination of the message prior to the events, uh, last time we had a recorded message from Chief Parrish and that was very effective. And that message will play again. Now, it's a different message. It relates to this particular closure, but Chief Parrish's message will go out, broadcast to the callers in the Houston County area. In addition, there will be a second recorded message from Sheriff Valenza. Valenza. Sheriff Valenza. Uh, and that second message will go out, and that will help us with our staff.